everybody. Welcome to my channel. My name is Jerry Ann Henson. This is my husband, Jim. Hi. Um, as you can see by the title, this is a reintroduction video. Um, I have, we've gotten so many new subscribers in the last year that I wanted to jump on here and create a whole brand new get to know me kind of thing. So Jim's going to leave us for now. Gotta Thank go you, Jim. The guests. No, you don't. Thank you, Jim. I love you. Love you too. Thank you. So really quick, I wanted to just come on here and to give you guys a little bit of my story. I know that um, if you've never seen my face, if you only watch DIYs, you probably will never see my face unless you watch the introduction. Um, but I wanted to just basically lay down a little bit of my story, basically talk about a little bit of presumptions that people have and have had in the past. And just to give you a little bit of like where I'm coming from, and then we're going to have a special surprise at the end. So I first of all wanted to let you know, if you're new here, I'm from um, Long Island, New York. I lived there my whole life till 2012. And then Superstorm Sandy came and um, demolished my family home, my childhood home. It didn't demolish it, I'm sorry. It made it impossible for me to live there anymore. And they said they were going to total it and they ended up fixing it up. And now my brother lives there, which is great. I moved to Missouri. We had planned to move to mid-Missouri to be with Jim's mom, because Jim is an only child, um, after my father passed away. My father was 10 years older than Sally, so we knew eventually we'd have to, not have to, and that doesn't sound right, but we, we knew eventually we wanted to come out here and to be with her in her later years in case she needed any help. And it's really what it's been. So we're blessed. She feels grateful. And that makes me happy. I decided in 2016, December 3rd to be exact, to take this venture into the YouTube world. I had trouble finding work when I moved here. Work that I can earn enough money to support my family and that I could physically do because of my physical limitations. I have always been morbidly obese my whole life. I was a fat baby. I was a fat toddler. I was a fat child. Um, but I was always very active and I was really beat my body up. I played softball and volleyball and we ran track. I mean, it was just a lot. And I was in a marching band and I walked probably hundreds of thousands of miles over the course of my career there uh, carrying a bass drum. So I really tore up my body. Um, in 2011, I was dancing at a Christian rock concert and I tore the meniscus in my knee and it hurt and it was hard to bear on, but then it became excruciating after five days. And on day five, I went to the hospital and they drew some fluid and found out that I had a bacterial infection. It had gone septic. Um, it had, I had the streptococcal, I think that's how it's pronounced. Basically I had the, the strep bacteria that was living up in my knee. They had a whole big party. So I ended up having surgery. It was my first and only trip to the hospital, trip to the emergency room, surgery. All happened in one week. Um, and then ever since then, I just have not had my stamina and my strength back. Um, took me 14 weeks of physical therapy because of the type of infection I had. And I knew then from, now on, from then on, it was going to be difficult for me to have a job where I had to do a lot of really physical work. I worked from 1993 to 1994, and then from 1998 to 2013 when we moved at a company called AHRC Nassau, which formerly stood for the Association for the Help of Retarded Children, but since has been adapted to just stand for AHRC. I worked as direct care, I worked as a coach, lead coach, house manager, assistant house manager, house manager, and site coordinator at the different programs. Basically worked my way up in the 15 years. And um, when I was younger, when I started, I was direct care and did all the things, lifting and all the walking and the transportation, all the things that you do when you take care of people, people with special needs. So if you're a parent or a caretaker of somebody with special needs of any kind, I just say kudos to you, sending love and good vibes out because that is one of the hardest jobs there is. So I was actually working in the group home when the hurricane hit. Um, I didn't know what kind of damage was at my house. 
and they had closed off the roads the next day and they weren't letting anybody go back for two days. So it wasn't until the hurricane was on October 20, 29th and it wasn't until November 2nd that I got to go. I had gotten to go back home to actually see what the damage was. It took us a while to clean up everything and it was cold because it was November and they didn't have, well, there was no heat because we didn't have electricity or the, the hot water heater got ruined and the boiler got ruined and it was just a lot to try to clean. We finally had gotten water turned on and then we got a new hot water heater so it was able to like clean with boiled water and put the oven on and uh, put the stove on to get like um, you know warm air. But after much ado, a uh, six months staying in the group home, we decided it was time for us to move. With the help of the American Red Cross, we packed up everything we owned and we moved to Missouri. And the rest of the story goes where I tried really hard to get a job that will that I could do that would earn us money. I had two jobs that were actually costing me money and was taking me out of my house six days a week. And I said, well, that's not worth it. So this one is perfect. It ended up being a perfect job. I didn't know how it was going to be at first. I talked to my family. I asked them for their support in this venture. And they were very happy to be able to do whatever they could to help out. It has taken off. We will be celebrating our third anniversary in just a few, actually just next week. Um, and we recently hit 50,000 subscribers, which is a huge milestone in my book. Um, it was, a, it was a little while ago. I think we're almost up to 53 now, but I knew that I wanted to shoot this video and I definitely wanted to be on Thanksgiving because I just cannot thank you all enough. You are loving, supporting people who are, have like the kindest words and have welcomed me into your home every day for the past three years, or well, almost every day for the past three years. I did take off a few weeks last year, but <laughs> um, I am not on disability. I've never been on disability. I take care of my home and my family. I have no children, of, we have no children of our own, but we take care of mom in the house. And Jim is my partner and he would like to be a full-time YouTuber partner in my, in my channel when he's able to retire. So that's a goal for our future. If things continue to grow the way they have, that is something that we could potentially do. So to celebrate the 50,000 subscribers um, I've gotten in the three years, I have gotten three $50 gift cards. Yes, they're all red trucks. <laughs> I got one from the Dollar Tree, one from Hobby Lobby, and one from Walmart. And I'm going to be doing a drawing. It's going to be open for exactly one week. So one week from today, um, next Thursday, I will draw. I do. I use a thing called Random Comment Generator. So to enter, the only thing you need to do is to comment on this video. Just comment one time. Um, if you are not subscribed, you're going to need to go ahead and subscribe to my channel and go ahead and give this video a thumbs up. But to be honest with you, I can't tell who thumbs up my videos, but what I can tell is who subscribed and who left a comment. And then if you don't leave a comment, the random generator uh, comment generator will not be able to pick you. If you leave more than one comment, the random comment generator will not pick you. So I want to make sure everybody has a fair chance. So just comment once. And that includes commenting on other people's video um, comments, okay? What I normally do or I've done in the past is I go ahead and stick in something that I said along the way as a question. I'm going to disable the comments so nobody can cheat. <laughs> um, and it's just to get everybody to watch and pay attention and listen. Because a lot of times I have to tell you, people ask questions that are really explained in the video, but I think they jump ahead and they don't get to listen to the instructions. So here you have to listen to the instructions. If you would like to enter in the comments down below, I would like to ask when I moved to Missouri, what year did I move to Missouri? So if you heard me say what year we moved to Missouri, or you've heard it in the past, Go ahead and leave it in the comments down below. Just answer the date. That's all I want. You could say hi or congratulations or whatever, but definitely needs to have the date in there. Um, the random comment generator. I always film that so you guys can see that it's fair and honest. Um, uh, I'd like to leave something for you guys in the closing. And I had written it 
um, when there was a little, you know, I would say discontent in some of the, um, in some of the comments from time to time, we sometimes get people who just aren't happy with themselves. So it rubs, rubs off it. They deflect it on us or they're not happy with somebody that reminds me of them, reminds them of me, <laughs> reminds me of them. Hey, they remind me of somebody. I remind them of somebody that they don't care for. And then they use projection to uh, be upset with me for things that really are out of my control. And I don't want you, I want you to know that doesn't bother me. There are a few things we need to talk about. First, let me start off by saying none of the critical or negative things in the comments mean anything to me. I don't place my value in others' negative opinions. What they say says more about them than us. As I've mentioned before, we are granted the freedom of speech, but who grants us the right to judge others? Being judgmental and opinionated about how others live their lives is a learned behavior, not human nature. Like any negative behavior, we try not to reinforce it, but address it if it affects others negatively. But it is important for me to get you all to understand that, so you don't either. If someone says something negative to me and you feel that way about yourself, I don't want you to take it to heart. Repeat after me. I don't place my value or my self-worth in the opinions of others. Repeat after me. I know my self-worth because only I know what struggles I face and endure each and every day. Repeat after me. I am loved. I am valued. I am the best me there is. All I ever ask of you is all I ask of myself. Try. Try every day to do your best. Try every day to do more than yesterday. Try every day to learn something new and to share something learned. And above all else, give yourself grace when all of those things may not have turned out as successful as you hoped. You are valued. You are loved. You are blessed. I cursed the day I had no shoes until I met a man that had no feet. You are blessed and don't let anyone else tell you otherwise. Thank you all for your continued love and support. And as always, you take care. God bless. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Happy Thanksgiving.